Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm down on the corner of Saratoga and Holiday Streets near City Hall and we're going to talk about the Hollywood Diner behind me. Now some of you, if you're like me, you walk past this almost every Sunday when you go to the Sunday Farmer's Market um, or maybe you know it, you have eaten here in the 1980s or 90s or even in the 2000s or maybe you, don't, you haven't heard of the Hollywood Diner at all and this is new to you but no matter how you know it or not, it has a really fascinating and colorful history uh, that we're going to talk about in just a second. But I have to start by saying a, a quick thank you. We're heading into the holiday season and the end of the year. And I want to say thanks to everybody who has contributed to Baltimore Heritage. And then a special thanks to everybody who's contributed to help us meet a new challenge match gift that we got in an unbelievable uh, and surprise uh, opportunity. A kind uh, donor to Baltimore Heritage has said that she will match dollars dollar for dollar every gift that we get, uh, every new gift we get, and every increased gift we get up to $50,000. And for those of you who know Baltimore Heritage, our two staff, myself and my colleague Molly Ricks, um, and our great team of volunteers uh, who we rely on every day, $50,000 is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So thank you to everybody uh, who is help, uh, helping us make that uh, challenge gift possible. We're over halfway there um, and we've still got a month to go. So thanks again. All right, Hollywood Diner. We are going to start our story in 1981 and have to say thanks to uh, Baltimore Sun reporter Richard Gorlick, who did a wonderful story on this about 10 years ago. But 1981, uh, our hometown hero, Barry Levinson, the movie producer, um, was filming his movie, Diner, um, here in Baltimore, and of course, looking for a diner to film it in. Um, the diner that inspired him, the one that he went to as a, a young uh, boy and man, was up on Reisterstown Road, and it was called Hill top diner and it was a classic diner it had gleaming stainless steel outside and counters inside full of teenagers with their angst and bravado it had waitresses with starch shirts um, it was open 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year it was owned by a Greek Baltimorean Paul Stamos who loved the diner but also loved Greek dancing equally much apparently the problem was that that was a great diner in 1950s uh, uh, and 60s, but by 1981 it, it had become a liquor store. Um, gone were the countertops and booths. Uh, gone was the stainless steel outside, replaced by some sort of corrugated something. Um, so Levinson and his Hollywood folks needed to find a new diner. To do that, they went up to New Jersey and they found a diner graveyard, or maybe more accurately, a diner parking lot where old diners went to hang out until they could find a new use. And they found a diner that had been on Long Island. It was called the Westbury Grill. And it was a classic diner. In fact, it's the diner behind me. Um, uh, it had its booths and its uh, countertops, and it was portable. So they brought it down, put it on a truck, brought it down here to Baltimore, but not to here. They brought it to Canton. They put it on Boston Street and a lot on Boston Street and Montford. I think today the Anchorage Complex has townhouses there, but back then it was just a lot. Um, and they filmed their movie. In 1982 was the world premiere um, uh, at the Senator Theater up on York Road, and it was a smashing success. Everybody loved it. So hooray for Barry Levinson. Hooray for the young actor Kevin Bacon, who went on to star in many, many more movies. But not hooray for the diner. Its lease was up and back up to the New Jersey diner parking lot it went. Um, but into our story now steps another hometown hero, Mayor William Donald Schaefer. And Schaefer uh, knew that everybody loved the diner and wanted, it bring, wanted to bring it back to Baltimore. So he put it on what he called his wish list. This was a list that he kept, uh, a very publicly kept, talked about all the time, of things that he hoped Baltimoreans would donate or do for the city. And at the top of the list uh, was uh, bring the diner back. And lo and behold, Schaefer got his wish. In 1984, WMAR Radio purchased the diner for $32,000 and brought it back, this time to here at Holiday uh, in Saratoga Streets. That was good, but it was really only the start because the diner was great for a Hollywood movie set, but not great for serving food. For one, it didn't have a kitchen, and for two, it didn't have any bathrooms, so it needed help. So back on the wish list it went, and Baltimoreans arose to the challenge again and donated a million dollars worth of uh, sort of cash and goods and uh, services. Not sure why it cost so much, uh, but with those donations, the diner got back into working order. It was owned by the city. 
and in fact operated by the school system. It was called Kids Diner, and it was a training ground for young people uh, who were going to go into the food services industry. Um, it took all of about six months for Schaefer to get really mad at the diner. He complained that the prices were exorbitant. He could not stand that a hamburger was $2.35 or a, a grilled cheese sandwich was $1.95, and he threatened to shut it down. But Schaefer cooled down and did not shut it down. Um, in fact, he became a staunch supporter. Even as it began losing $100,000 a year, he said it was never meant to make money. It was meant to train kids. And the diner, as kids diner, had a pretty long run, but eventually the city couldn't stomach losing $100,000 a year anymore. Um, and uh, they turned to a group called the Chesapeake Center for Youth Development uh, to operate it. And uh, those folks did. They partnered with the old Stouffer Hotel. Some of you may remember that. That's now the Renaissance Harbor Place Hotel, and they would train uh, youth offenders here who then would go on to the hotel and then to uh, careers in the food industry. And they had a pretty long run at it, about 10 years, uh, but ultimately couldn't make it go. It went through a series of other operators, a coffee shop, a southern food place, back to a diner type establishment. None of them, none of them can make it last. And today, alas, the diner sits unused. Um, its outside is still fantastically shiny silver, and its inside is uh, great with booths and counters, just like a 1950s movie set, but with a kitchen and bathroom. Maybe it just is waiting for its stars to align uh, for the right operator. Or maybe it needs to move to another place in Baltimore, not New Jersey, uh, to find success. But if it has not found success as a restaurant in the long term, it has as a movie set. In addition to Kevin Bacon uh, in the movie Diner, Barry Levinson used it uh, for uh, Tin Men. Danny DeVito uh, drank coffee here. Uh, the actor Adrian Brody hung out here in Liberty Heights. Um, and for you Wire fans, Detective Jimmy McNulty picked up a waitress here um, in The Wire. I'm going to end on a softer note, though, because uh, Meg Ryan also uh, visited here. She stopped here for tea on Christmas Eve on her way to visit her fiance in Sleepless in Seattle. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.